CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet, and today we're going to do something a little bit different, which is I'm just going to teach you some tools that you'll need to do amigurami. And specifically, what I would like to do for this video is to teach you how to increase and decrease. Now, I had a conversation not long ago on um, my YouTube. Uh, on this YouTube channel was someone who was really having a hard time with increasing and decreasing with amigurami with my um, little alien baby Yoda project. And um, it's so hard to help people when you're talking to them through text. I do the best I can, but it can be hard. So, um, and she's not the, ever, the first person who's ever asked for help with this. I've had a lot of questions about increasing and decreasing, specifically for amigurami. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to learn today. And um, I'm excited. So, let's get into the materials. Just for this video, you can use any yarn you want. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook. A lot of people don't use hooks that big for amigurami, but again, amigurami is a stuffed animal or something stuffed uh, for crochet. So it doesn't have to be tiny. A lot of people think that amigurami has to be tiny. Basically, it is a stuffed uh, project that you're making. So um, usually it's animals or different stuffed animals. Sometimes they are small, sometimes they are big. So the size hook you use and the size yarn you use and the type of yarn you're, you use all has to do with what you're making. So if you're making something bigger, then you might you need a bigger hook. If you're making something smaller, you know, so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind. Um, and you might need a pair of scissors and a darning needle if you want to finish something up for this. I don't really need this because, again, I'm just teaching you how to increase and decrease. But something you will definitely need is a stitch marker. Now, a lot of people love the fancy stitch markers, um, and I just can never keep up with them. So I simply use a piece of yarn that is not the same color as the yarn I'm using for my project. So that's all I use, guys. I can't stand those other things. They just get lost. It's just a waste of time and money, okay? So the first thing you want to do is do a magic circle. Now, I am, this is a beginner video, but it is not for complete beginners. So that means if you don't know how to do a magic circle, you don't know how to do a single crochet, you don't know how to use your hook, and things like that. I'm not saying don't watch this video. Please watch it because it probably will help. But I would like you to go check out my beginner video and that'll be linked in the description box below. And that can help you a lot with getting started with crochet. So they, if you're literally new to this, then you might wanna check that out. But if you're literally new to amigurami, then this should help, okay? So I'm going to make a magic circle and most projects start with a magic circle, okay? Now, another thing that you can do, and you might not know this, or you might, is you can do the chain of two magic circle. Now, this that I just did is just a regular magic circle, and then I would work single crochets into it, like this, around the magic circle. A lot of people prefer this method and they prefer it because it gets a very tight circle. And with amigurami, you really want your stitches to be tight. You want everything to be tight with amigurami because you're going to be stuffing it and you don't want your stuffing to show through, okay? But I'm gonna show you a different way in case you don't know how to do a magic circle. So what you would do is you would do a slip knot, you would chain two, and in the second chain, you would work however many stitches your project asks for. So in the second stitch, I'm going to do, let's say six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you would just pull tight. And that works like a magic circle as well. So whichever you prefer to use, you can, okay? So now we've done a chain of six. So a lot of times you'll get um, an amigurami pattern or you'll be watching a video. They will ask you to make a magic circle or do the chain of two magic circle. And then they will ask you to do six single crochets into there, okay? And then they're gonna tell you that you're going to need to work in the round. Well, if you're new to crochet, you're kind of like, what does that mean? And I remember when I first started on amigurami, and I was like, what does that mean in the round? I don't understand. All that means is, is that you're not going to close your circle, 
okay? Normally in a project, you would go into your first stitch that you made and you would do a slip stitch and that would close your circle. But for amigurami, usually, you're not gonna do that. You're going to be working in the round. So that means that you would go into this very first stitch right here and you would just start crocheting, okay? So instead of closing it, you would just go right in here and you would start doing your increases and decreases to make your project bigger, okay? So we're gonna do that. So right now I want to go into this first stitch and I'm not gonna use my um, stitch marker yet. I think it's a better idea to wait, okay? And hear me out, it's because it just gets confusing. So just, this is just the way I do it and I wanna show you how. Because right in the beginning, you can easily count, okay? If your project says, or your video says, that now you need to do two stitches in each stitch around, then you know how many you need because you just, just did six. So that means now you need 12. So you're gonna go into this next stitch right here, working in the round now. Now you know what that means. And we're going to put two single crochets, one and two. And you're gonna do two all the way around with a count of 12. So that was one and two. So in the next, do two more. So that would be three and four into the next two more. So that would be five and six into the next two more seven and eight and into the next two more nine and 10 and into the next two more, which would be 11 and 12. Okay. So now you've done your increases all the way around. And as you can see, because I didn't do my magic circle, this keeps getting a little bit loose. And if you can tell, there's that little place right there that I can't stand. And that's why I usually do a magic circle, but that's just my OCD, guys. You can still do this, it looks great. Okay, so now I've done my increase all the way around. Increase means that I've increased in a stitch. And this row that we just did, we did two in each. So that means we increased in each stitch around, okay? So that's how we just increased. But now we're gonna bring in our stitch marker and this is just to show us where to start and stop without having to count constantly. So right in this last stitch that I worked, I'm going to put my stitch marker. Okay, I'm gonna pull my yarn back down And now I'm going to start working around again. Again, we're working in the round. So I'm gonna go into my next available stitch. And let's say in this round, someone asks you to do one single crochet and one increase for three times, okay? So you would go into your next stitch, you would do one single crochet, and in the next, you would do an increase. That means you would put two single crochets in your next stitch, one and two. And in the next, one single crochet. And in the next, an increase, one and two. Okay? And then you would go into your next, put one single crochet and into the next two single crochets. Now that would be if someone asked you to go three, only do an increase, do that for three times. Naturally, I want you to keep doing that all the way to the end, but I was just giving you an example. So again, go into your next stitch, put one single crochet, and in the next, do an increase, one and two. And into the next, one single crochet, and into the next two single crochets. Into the next one single crochet, and into the next two single crochets. Now, what I'm showing you, you're gonna end on two single crochets. So you're gonna pull out your stitch marker, and in this last increase, we'll put the two single crochets. Then you will put your stitch marker back. 
okay? Now let's do another row of increase. And the reason why I'm saying another row of increase is because at some point in that row, I'm going to be increasing, okay? So what I would like you to do now is do a single crochet in the next two and then do an increase. So let's see how many around you would need to do, like if it was going to be in a written pattern. So if I did one, one, and then two, 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 however many that was, because I could not keep count, that's how many the pattern would say to repeat it. So if it says do one, um, do two single crochets and then one increase for five or six times around, that's what that means. But just remember this, you really need the count. That's what you need. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now I know that we're doing in multiples of six. So my next row, I should have 24, okay? Now I just know that because I've been crocheting for forever. And a lot of you might know that as well or doing amigurami for forever. So I know in my next one, I need 24 stitches. So if for some reason, you miss a stitch or you miss an increase, then just when you get to the end, add a little bit more. All you, all you need is that count. That way it won't be messed up. <coughs> so in my next stitch, I'm going to put one single crochet in my next one single crochet and in the next, I'm going to put two. So what that would read in a pattern or on a video is two single crochets and one increase. So again, we're gonna do that all the way around. So I'm gonna do one single crochet in the next, one single crochet in the next, and in the next, I'm going to put two single crochets. Okay? In the next, one single crochet, and the next one single crochet, and in the next two single crochets. In the next one single crochet, and the next one single crochet, and in the next two single crochets. And you would just keep doing that all the way around or however much your pattern asks you to do it. So one, one, and then we're right at where our stitch marker is. Pull out your stitch marker and do your last increase. And then you would put your stitch marker back. Now I'm gonna show you how to decrease because I think we've now got the handle of increasing, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want, your pattern would say, go into your next two stitches and do, or they would say, do two single crochets and one decrease for so many times around, okay? So I would go into my next stitch and put one single crochet, into my next one single crochet, and then I would do an invisible decrease. Now, I just do invisible decreases for everything. So there is not, uh, that's the way I'm gonna teach you how to decrease, okay? That's just what I use for my amigurami. It looks tighter, it looks good. So what I'm gonna do for my decreases, you're gonna take two stitches basically and put them together. So I did my two single crochets. Then I'm gonna go in the front stitch of the next one, just like this. Then I'm gonna go in the front stitch of the next one, just like this. Then I'm gonna pull my yarn through and then I'm going to single crochet. So I've just decreased by putting these two stitches together now. So then I would continue. I would go into my next stitch and do one single crochet, into my next stitch, one single crochet, and into the next two, I would do a decrease. So I would go into the front loop only, then in the next, I would go in the front loop only, pull my yarn through, and do a single crochet. Then I would go into my next stitch, put one single crochet, into my next, one single crochet, and then I would decrease again, going through my front loop only, 
my next one, front loop only, pull my yarn through, do a single crochet. And I would just keep doing that all the way around. And you would do it for however your pattern or your video calls for you to do. So let me just do this next one extra slow so you can see the decrease process. So I would go through the front loop of my next stitch, the front loop of my next. You can see I'm not pulling up any yarn. I'm just putting my, my uh, hook through those front loops. Then I would pull through and do a single crochet. Now with Amigurami, I am trying to keep my work pretty tight because I don't want any holes. So then I would go into my next stitch, one single crochet, into my next, one single crochet. And so in these last two stitches, I'm going to be doing a decrease. So I'm gonna pull my stitch marker out because I'm gonna be working into that stitch. So I'm gonna go into the front loop of this stitch. I'm gonna go into the front loop of this stitch. And then I'm gonna pull the yarn through and do a single crochet. Then I would put my stitch marker back and now you know how to increase and decrease. So I hope this is really helpful. The thing is, is that patterns are written up so differently. Everyone has certain ways of writing patterns. Um, and by the way, I will address in this video because people are always asking me for written patterns. Um, and that is something I might do in the future, but for right now, I did have a blog and I just, um, I just didn't get enough interest in it. And it just, it was putting a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to come up with and write out patterns and then put them, uh, type them up on a thing. So, I mean, it's just a lot of work. So if you don't have a lot of people coming to that page, that website, that blog, whatever you have set up, then it can become hard. But I am thinking about trying to find a way to do that in the near future. That's something I'm thinking about because I'm getting more and more uh, requests for written patterns. So, and that will just depend. I mean, if I start doing the written patterns and I keep getting interest and I'll continue to do it. But if I stop, if I don't, then I'll have to stop because it's just, you know, I've got everyone, uh, my time is important and everyone's time is important. So, you know, that's how I kind of, uh, decide on what I'm going to do for this channel and for, um, for custom comfy crochet, okay? But I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any more questions, and of course I can turn that around, and now I've made like a little half circle here. So basically I kind of just showed you how to do a circle, and then you would continue to increase or decrease until you get to the end, and then you would decrease, and then it would close up, and then you would stuff it, but that's a whole another video, which I might do um, just to give some more pointers on Amigurami, but on all of my Amigurami videos, I really try to go into detail on how tight the stitches need to be, how to stuff your projects, um, how to do the in, um, invisible decrease, how to increase. Um, but for people who are brand new, even those videos can be kind of hard. So that's why I wanted to go over this in relation to a written pattern, because that's what's hard is a lot of times people will find something that they like on the internet and they'll think, okay, I'm going to try to do this written pattern. The written pattern is, is you know, typed up funny. It looks like foreign language. You don't know what's going on. So it can be kind of difficult. So I hope this would help. But if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can find me obviously here in the comment section below. You can ask anything you want, but you can also find my Gmail below. You can find my Facebook below. You can find my Instagram below. You can message me, send me an email, anything you need to do. I would be glad to help. Okay. So happy new year, guys. Stay safe. Wear your mask. I'll see you soon. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.